In this computer science lesson, you will learn about input validation. For example, you may have written a program that expects the user to enter a number. But, as you've seen, under some circumstances, if the user doesn't behave as you want, it can cause your program to crash. Now that you've met the IF statement, you can begin to take steps to ensure that this doesn't happen. Input validation is one aspect of what is known as defensive design. I'm going to write a program that allows the user to input a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and it will convert it into degrees Celsius. I've already created a Windows Forms app and I've placed a few controls on the form. I have a text box which I've called TXT Temperature, as you can see in the Properties window, and I've got a button which I've called BTN Convert. So let's write some code. I'll start by collecting the data from the form. Before I can do anything with the user's input, I need to convert it into a numeric value. In this case, I'm using a double. I'm going to need another variable to store the result of converting this value into Celsius. And to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, the formula I need is this. The brackets in this arithmetic expression are essential. I want this subtraction to take place before I do the division. Without the brackets, 32 would be divided by 1.8, and then the result of that would be subtracted from the temperature in Fahrenheit, giving me a completely different result. And now I'll output the temperature in Celsius. I'm using a capital letter here because it's somebody's name. Anders Celsius, the Swedish astronomer. There's no validation in my program yet, so let's see what happens. If I type a temperature of, let's say, 75 Fahrenheit, that's 23.88888 degrees Celsius. That seems to be working. I'll do something about all of those decimal places later. A temperature of 0 Fahrenheit is minus 17.7 Celsius. That looks about right. 25 Fahrenheit is minus 3. Well, that's working fine at the moment, but what if I enter text instead of a number? My program has crashed. It's attempting to convert the text 3 into a double value, which of course is impossible. So the cast is failing. Furthermore, if the user doesn't enter anything at all, That is also causing the program to crash, because the zero length string can't be converted into a double. I'm going to include an if block to test what the user has entered before I attempt to cast it to a double, like this. If the user leaves the text box blank, in other words, if they input a zero length string, I'll give an appropriate message and then I'll stop the program. I'm stopping the program by using the return keyword. That means any code from now on isn't going to run. This won't happen. Let's give this a try. I'm leaving it blank and there's the error message. I could also do with popping the cursor back into the text box txt temperature dot focus. It just means that after the error message has been dismissed, the cursor's already sitting in the text box. But I still have a problem here. I need to check that what the user has entered can be converted to a number. I'm going to do this using something called the try parse method. First of all, let me focus on what try parse actually does. The IntelliCode is being very kind to me here. 
it's making some excellent predictions about what I want to do next. I'll just use the Tab key to accept that. I've declared a Boolean variable called I can convert this. A Boolean variable can hold a true or a false. I'm then calling the tryparse method of the double data type. Double dot tryparse means try to convert the value into a double. The value which I want to convert is in the text box. So that's the first thing I need to give to the tryparse method. The other thing I can give to it is a variable into which it will put the output if the conversion is successful. Furthermore, if the conversion is successful, a boolean true will go into this variable. If it's not possible to convert the data into a double, then a boolean false will go into this variable. I've put a return here to eliminate the code underneath. I don't want that to run. I just want to see what this little block does. So I'll type some text. Try parse returned false. It was unable to convert it. More importantly, it didn't crash the program. If I type something that can be converted, something which I can parse, then try parse returns true. So I have a way of checking if something is a number or not. To make use of this, I'm going to get rid of this Boolean variable. I don't actually need it. I'm going to pass the return value of the try parse method directly to an if statement. So there's my second validation block. If it's not possible to convert the temperature which the user has entered into a double, that is, if it's not possible to cast it as a double, we'll give an error message, we'll clear the text box and we'll put the focus back into it. And then we'll exit the subroutine. Let's give it a try. You must enter a number. If I do enter a number, the rest of the program will continue. Before I go any further, let me give you a little bit of terminology. Here, I'm checking to see if the data that I need is actually present. We call this a presence check. Here, I'm checking that the data which is entered is of the correct type. And we call this a type check. Let's see if I can crash the program by entering a number which is just way too big. I'm holding down the key on the keyboard here. That's a very big number. It's coping with it absolutely fine. But perhaps I don't want to work with something this big. Certainly if I was expecting integer values, this would cause my program to crash as well. This would cause an overflow error. So what I'm going to do is check the length of what the user has typed in the text box. If the length of what the user types is greater than 10 characters, I'm asking them to enter fewer digits. Perhaps not the most appropriate way of checking what the user has typed in, but this illustrates another type of validation check called, of course, a length check. I can also perform a range check, making sure that the data falls within a particular range of values. Before I can do this, though, I need to actually convert it into a number. And I'm pretty confident that the cast is going to work, because I wouldn't have got this far if the input data hadn't passed all of the other checks. So here's the range check. So if the user enters a temperature 
less than minus 459, which is around about absolute zero. You can't get any colder than that. Or if the temperature is bigger than a thousand, then we'll display an error message. Notice the logical OR operator is a couple of vertical bars. That's working. And so is that. Now I just want to tidy my code up a little bit. I've got a number of separate if blocks, but I could make them all part of the same if block by using else if, like this. This if block has to stand alone. There's another type of validation check which I haven't mentioned, and it's not really appropriate here. But imagine I want the user to type in perhaps a postcode or a zip code, and I want to make sure that it's all in capital letters, or perhaps that it begins with a particular letter of the alphabet. That kind of validation would be called a format check, and you'll come across the tools and techniques you need to do that kind of thing in a later lesson. Now that I have all my validation in place, I'm going to modify my program so that the user can enter a temperature in degrees Celsius and have it converted into Fahrenheit, or they can enter it in Fahrenheit and have it converted into Celsius. To give the user the choice, I'm going to use a pair of radio buttons. So the idea is the user types in a temperature and then they indicate whether that temperature is in Fahrenheit or Celsius. Let's see how these radio buttons behave. You can select one or the other, but not both. They are mutually exclusive. And this is how you can check the user's selection. A radio button has a checked property, which can be either true or false. So if the user has indicated that the temperature they've entered is in Fahrenheit, then I'll assign it to the Fahrenheit variable, while casting it of course. If the user has indicated that the temperature is in Celsius, then I'll assign the value to the temperature in Celsius variable. It's just another if block, but I've nested it inside an existing if block. This if block will only execute if the input data has passed all of the other validation checks. In fact, I'm going to do some more nesting now. If the user has indicated that the temperature is in Fahrenheit, We'll convert it to a double, and then we perform the range check. If, on the other hand, the user has indicated that the temperature is in Celsius, I convert it to a double, but I'm assigning the value to a different variable, and I'm going to perform a different range check. Because in degrees Celsius, absolute zero is around about minus 275, if I'm not mistaken. And finally, I'm doing the calculations, which of course depend on what the user has selected. So if I'm working with a temperature in Fahrenheit, I convert it into Celsius. If I'm working with a temperature in Celsius, I convert it into Fahrenheit. Slightly different formula this time. No brackets necessary, because the multiplication operation has a higher precedence than the addition operation. The last piece of functionality I want to add is an else clause to advise the user that they have to select Fahrenheit or Celsius. Now, before I thoroughly test my application, I want to tidy up the code just a little bit more. 
Whenever you're nesting if blocks inside other if blocks, it's particularly important that you pay attention to the way your code is indented, so that the code can be easily understood and therefore easily maintained. A consistent layout is another aspect of defensive design. There's the beginning and end of one particular if block. There's the beginning and end of another particular if block. Here's an if block. Hopefully you can see that the indentation makes it clear where it begins and where it ends. I suppose exactly how you lay out your code is up to you. It's a matter of style. As long as the curly brackets and the semicolons are in the right place, it'll run. But I strongly recommend that you take a consistent approach. Now let's give the application a thorough testing. First of all, I'm not going to enter anything at all. You cannot leave the temperature blank, that's fine. Let's try some text. You must enter a number. Let's try a number. Please select Fahrenheit or Celsius. And that's working nicely. I should really test the length check. Please enter fewer digits. And I should test my range checks. And they seem to be working as well. Why not try writing this program yourself? It might seem quite complicated, but it's well worth attempting. If you prefer, you could do something slightly different. For example, you could convert a weight from pounds to kilograms and kilograms to pounds. Or you could convert a distance from miles to kilometres and kilometres to miles. It's up to you. 